Hello and welcome to Explain Like I'm 10, where we ask small questions which have some big answers. This question is small, but it is also a very existential question, I must say. Uh, a lot of people have asked themselves this, or maybe not asked themselves this, or asked themselves, what is the point of even asking this question to yourself? And you have seen people politicians ko kaise behave karte hai, unka kaam kaisa hai, whatever it is, kitna compromise karna padta hai, all the things come in when you ask this question. Um, I have a very personal interest in this uh, question also and this topic in general because uh, I used to in my previous life work with some elected members of parliament for seven years as a legislative researcher and a speech writer and also I ran some campaigns somewhere in godforsaken small town India and uh, yeah so I have always asked this question to myself when I got into uh, this this fellowship called the legislative assistance to, re- uh, to members of parliament lamp fellowship someone asked me Ki, oh did you do you want to enter politics and I was like yes yes I do I do uh, that has changed <laughs> big time um, now there is way more nuance to that question there is way more understanding uh, and our guest for today is, I feel like she was also in a similar situation. Uh, please say hello to Aprajita Bharti. Aprajita, I have known Aprajita for 12 years now, if I'm yes. not wrong. Yes. Yes. And uh, we did the same fellowship, uh, which is the legislative assistance to members of parliament. So she has also worked with politicians and continues to work with politicians to some extent. She is yes. also the founder of YLAC, which is Young Leaders for Active Citizenship. It is a program where uh, young professionals and young people in general are told more about policy making and public policy. And she also co-founded Quantum Hub, a think tank where she employs some of these young people to work in the think tank. So, it's a very you know, full circle business. Yes, chala full hai. business. yes. but thank you to the consulting firm, I just want to say it's not a think tank. Oh, it's a consulting firm. My yes, bad. It's uh, yeah. So, it's a policy consulting firm and uh, she runs this giant operation uh, with her partner Rohit. And um, I, I feel like, uh, Aprajita, we have known each other forever. I feel like we've had this conversation also on multiple occasions through our lives. Yes. Yes. Um, so, when you said yes to this, uh, what was your first reaction? I was like, why am I being called to this? Because clearly I have not joined politics after all these years, <laughs> even though I've been in close proximity to it. But I think it's useful for people to know that, you know, what is that journey from wanting to get into politics to having a more considered view of it and Mm. well, not letting go of that ambition completely and yet thinking about what is the best way to get in and what is the best time. So Mm. I don't know if anybody will gain out of that thought process, Uh, but yeah, it's interesting. I am also keen to learn what you have learned in all these years about entering (laughs) politics. Yeah. So it's going to Um, be a two-way conversation. Absolutely. So I, I also have like a big stake in this. Uh, and joining us as our union leader of spectators today for the first time ever on this podcast yeah, is yeah. Noel. Uh, Noel is a comedian and a podcaster. Uh, he runs this podcast called Radical Measures. Uh, yes. Noel? First yes. person to say it correct. <laughs> <laughs> Noel, uh, yeah. Any radical measures or any big U- uh, global problems, if that is what people are thinking. <laughs> we talk about the least important problems in the world. Just to make it clear, Radical Measures Podcast does not give any sort of solutions to any global issues. We just discuss small problems like uh, Zomato bombarding our feed with, are you hungry, are you hungry, are you hungry? Or not my mom, Zomato. <laughs> my stomach is full. <laughs> I hope you are looking at the blue tick problem that everybody is facing right now. That or is that radical? No, no, no. Sorry, (laughs) we have never met this blue tick that you speak of. We are still comedians (laughs) in fame making. (laughs) Comedians in the making of fame. Uh, Rather, I'd say just buy it. Just buy it. Just buy it. (laughs) You have a wrong idea of how much comedians make. (laughs) 
well i did stand for the head boy election or prefect elections in my school and i did make a speech and i did that yeah yeah that qualifies no pakka yeah and uh, i saw i saw that okay that election meant nothing because everything is in the hand of the power brokers which is uh, my science teacher <laughs> you learned everything there is to learn about politics yeah, and I, i don't know how i got elected also because i promised the students that i would make the library available to them which would have been available from day one <laughs> but, but we had a school system where you needed like written permission from the principal to borrow books from the library insane i That's promised that i would do that yeah. <laughs> it's weird our librarian had the best gig <laughs> in his life he would just come so he 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 was like an ias officer he used to sit on a chair with like that white towel on the chair <laughs> and i remember he was signing certificates one day and i remember him like writing certificates and he was writing my name and he spelled it wrong and i tried to go and correct it <laughs> and he was like just do your job <laughs> go away <laughs> go away <laughs> yeah just go away <laughs> he used to when we used to borrow books he used to the books were all tattered and also he would tell us okay just put some fevicol on this book so he would Give us books for one week so we could mend it and give it back to him. Yeah, that was like very. That is very efficient. <laughs> very efficient. Sounds yeah. like sounds like our bureaucracy. I mean, I must yes. say, like everything 100%. about that just sounded like our bureaucracy. <laughs> He was made um, for bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, uh, Noel. So I've been uh, thinking about this question for a while now. You know, entering politics mm-hmm. in general. And I know for a fact that Aparajita has also thought about this. Uh, when mm-hmm. Aparajita, in her younger days of lamp, when we were both that actually that was a part of my introduction. That was a part yes. of my introduction. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> so uh, Aparajita, tell me, what did you think earlier when you actually got into the field of uh, let's. let's step back a little bit uh, and please talk a little bit about how you got into the field of public policy and what were you doing also yeah so actually uh, i used to do a lot of street theater in college and when i was in college we started this thing called manthan in delhi university which still continues till date and basically what we were doing is getting street theater back to streets and you know uh, when i was in college uh, in 2009 the whole a uh, bombay terrorist attack had happened it had a huge impact on our psyche in terms of and after that i remember after that terror attack happened there was an election i think the next in the next few months and only 33% people in south mumbai constituency showed up to vote and you know that had a huge impact on our psyche in terms of how much people crib but people don't want to participate in policy making or actually i did not even know what that there is something called policy making yeah i just yeah. knew that you know they don't participate in politics they don't even vote the play that i had written that year was actually about indifference of people and it was called tu gir gaya to kya so even if somebody falls you don't stop to pick them up and it was a metaphor for india which was falling uh, and you know nobody cared and everybody just went about their own life um so i had this deep desire that you know um i want to kind of participate in politics because that's what i knew and uh you know i want to know how that works and maybe at some point become an elected politician and probably change this and make government closer to people and uh, you know i was in a business college in i was in college of business studies in delhi university and all everybody cared about in our college was getting the best placement and mm. everybody wanted to get into consulting and everybody what just wanted to get into an mnc because they were new to india and you know that was the best life that middle class people like us could aspire for and uh, when i passed out from college i did get it but you know my heart was not in there and within two months of going to gurgaon i was like i can't do this thankfully that year the lamp fellowship which is the legislative assistant to member of parliament fellowship opened 
and i was in the part of the first batch and we were only 15 people the guinea pigs i would say and uh, i was very lucky to be placed with the rajya sabha mp mr nk singh who was also a retired bureaucrat and you know at that point i guess my life changed because i saw that okay i mean i was introduced to the world of public policy uh, through that i understood that there is something between politics and you know not politics not politics, <laughs> politics yeah, which is yeah. public policy um so that was really really exciting for me but i definitely you know my goal was and maybe is at some point uh, to use public policy as a means to sort of look at whether i can get into like a political kind of position and uh, well in that 10 12 year old journey there has been many back and forth thinking and mm. thinking of whether it is for us or not uh, but yeah i think uh, you know it was really exciting to just see how parliament works from up close meeting all these politicians in blood and flesh and realizing there are hundred shades of gray uh hmm. and you know it's not black or white as we assume it to be or what it looks like on a dinner table conversation and uh, these people are people uh more than anything else um uh, and they have incentives to respond to and uh, politics is a very very complex system so hmm. yeah it's been an interesting journey since then i i i'm actually uh, in, interested in this a lot because so as as aprajita said she was the pilot batch and we were the first official batch with like the full 50 people yeah. there etc so aprajita was the guinea pig and then she trained us and then like Pajita. we then went in um, and i was assigned to a rajya sabha mp also called uh, ranjit singh moite patel right i had no idea why i got into that fellowship i was like mere ko kuch nahi aata hai mere ko pata bhi nahi hai parliament kaise kaam karta hai but I, in my head i was like are mere ko bhi politics join karna hai you know because i don't know anything else i i so it seems like politicians also are like in the same boat so i was like yeah let, let's just let's just see if this works out same like aprajita lots of things have changed since then um, and i i also like harbor some am- ambitions at some point to maybe try out fighting an election uh, but then the thing is that i i remember this uh, like a few years after doing and working with politicians around 2014 odd I was like 2024 में मैं इलेक्शन लडूंगा, you know like <laughs> मुझे प्लान बना रहा है, या ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी को, मुझे दस साल का प्लान बनाना है कि व्हाट स्टेप्स डू आई नीड टू टेक टू गेट टू अ पॉइंट इन 2024 जहाँ पे मुझे एक पार्टी का टिकट मिलेगा एंड आई फाइट इलेक्शंस, दिमाग में इतना भर गया था वो एंड दैट काइंड ऑफ वेंट Like <laughs> up in the air, but uh, Noel, uh, if I ask you this, uh, could you join politics? Yeah, similar to you guys at this stage, no, because I'm very much aware that identity is a big part of politics. So, an English-speaking urban Catholic guy won't really do well in a popularity contest. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what group to catch, so to say. Mm-hmm. you know what i mean and even among catholics i am not a catholic of the people so to say you know what i mean like okay yeah i'm not because because there's a good chance i will have to go to like all those uh, charismatic sessions and all to get like people to vote for me and whatever i'm not that kind of guy so it's the editing to identity that i would have to do which is like completely different from how i am as a person you know what i mean like i'll have to present a form Yeah. that i am not you know so like and after living so long where like you are like nahi my identity is my identity that kind of mindset and i'm not going to perform for anyone i think it's going to be very difficult at this point to join politics mm. either i will have to be like extremely honest which won't work because mm. you will have to compromise you will have to be like i you will have to tell yourself that you can't be rigid so that would happen when i was younger sure at some point so I, by younger i mean like when i was a 10 11 year old like i really took the essay if you were president for one day if you were prime minister for one day what would you do uh, i would take that seriously and honestly i think that is the flaw when it comes to politics like similar to how when you think about engineering you immediately think about getting a job in google the top rank mm. you know so you in politics also immediately you say if you are prime minister what will you do 
there is yeah. no like middle rung ki okay how do i effect change within the highest level that i can reach or like any level that i can reach we are not taught that politics is local also you know it's mm. always at the top and then from the top things will come down so i think i am a victim of that mindset and that is why like i never thought of politics as local it was always national and now i start thinking and i'm more aware especially because i live in a in an area where like an mp and an mla both live in, mm. on either side of my building so i kind of i'm keyed in to the local side yeah i'm genuinely keyed and even i have seen like even an mp cannot make the road in front of his house uh, yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like to like it's like 10 meters on either side of his road but then after that like that's the area of his influence also <laughs> like, yeah 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 it's pretty sad so noel you know uh, one thing i think what you pot touched upon right now is mm. this aspiration right you know like which is mm. oh prime minister banenge ek din ek din ke liye basically nayak nayak you know, uh-huh. nayak is yeah. Yeah. yeah nayak is the influence on many people ki are yeah. agar mm. main ek din ke liye chief minister ya prime minister banunga to main kya kar sakta hu the thing is though in nayak it they've completely misrepresented what a chief minister mm. can do uh, yeah. or or whatever like it's like super powers like mud me khel ke like saving the world sort of thing but mm. leaving that aside but as as young impressionable people mm. that is the first thing with me also yeah. nayak had a big influence because not on me but my parents we used to watch nayak jab wo set max pe aata tha na ki politics mm. join kar roz aata tha yeah roz aata tha exactly so yeah. <laughs> when i when i first told uh, my family that i'm going to work in delhi with a politician they thought of amrish puri They didn't think of Anil Kapoor. Same, They thought same. of Amrish. I, yeah. I was asked whether I will be safe in an MP's office because I'm a woman. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I remember I had gone to this exit interview in the job that I'd got, and this lady was so nice. She was she was like, "Are you sure it's going to be safe? You know, do you know uh, what it's actually like? How have your parents allowed you to do this?" It was like so shocking. for yeah. her that somebody can leave their job and actually do this so, yeah yeah and and the weird thing is it's like in our heads like at least back then even now to a large extent politicians are villains um mm-hmm. or they have to be worshiped i mean it goes either way right you yes. know like mm-hmm. either you have to do like proper hero worship as if they are gods or you have to hate them to the last shred of your soul beech mein kuch nahi hai right um and you yeah, so that's why i wanted to ask both of you i think aprajita this question is very important um should you join politics is one of the question that people often ask so what would you say like if i say should should people join politics that's a very good question yeah. i think uh, you know i think people should join politics if they have the opportunity to do that Uh, that's a very very laden word because opportunity means a lot of things in politics hmm. but it's also important to think about what do you want to achieve by getting into politics and this goes back to the point that where is power and hmm. wo- where is the power to make what kind of change right so it's very important for us to know for example what does municipal corporation do or local governments do what can they achieve what hmm. can state governments achieve and what can central governments and then members of parliament achieve of course like any other profession it's wrong to think that one day you will wake up and you can uh, you know aspire to be the prime minister unless of course mm. you're born in a certain family then probably you can think of it and it can be a possibility uh, in your life but even yeah. then you can't take it for granted right so um that is something that one needs to be uh, cognizant of so i think yes if you think that you are inclined towards that you should want to join politics because if everybody thinks that politics is not for them then this country doesn't work the whole point mm. of democracy is that enough people contest and enough people want to be in that power they have some kind of draw to it and you know if there is good competition then hopefully good people come so i'm still idealistic about that i haven't still become too cynical about the fact hmm. that people shouldn't aspire to be in politics and i get this question asked a lot in vilac hmm. right so yeah. a lot of young people 
who come and do policy in action program uh, where you know we introduce them to the public policy world and get them to work with members of parliament for about a month or so they come with that aspiration and they ask me and i always tell them yes go for it if you have the mm. opportunity to do that a noel funny situation happened with me so like uh, we had this session with shashi tharoor at some point uh, mm. and there were like a bunch of other people i was sitting in the front right yeah. and shashi tharoor comes in and is like oh so how many of you aspire to join politics and how many of you want to be in politics and i enthusiastically raised my hand and i looked yeah. back and there was nobody else nobody else <laughs> nobody else <laughs> aprajita i don't know if aprajita remembers this scene i but remember I, that yeah yeah and because i i was in the front, i was like sab koi raise karega right i mean like that's what we are here for here for but, exactly but i raised my hand and then tharur was looking at me and he was like ha ah, idealistic young man i like you and you know you, this is what you should do the, the others are not but don't don't get a, don't be afraid you're you're not uh, you know like doing anything wrong by raising your, as if he was trying to convince me ki by raising my hand like a stupid I think, idiot i think i, was, I think <laughs> I think at that point, Tharoor was trying to convince himself that politics was the right. It's a good thing to do. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know what? I realized that I was coming from that Nayak mindset, right? Where I was huh. like, I want to be the Anil Kapoor in the world, uh, and mm. while my family thinks I'm going to be the Amrish Puri. But uh, the the whole thing is that uh, this should you join join politics? No, Noel is very important. Like for example, you said. रोड ठीक नहीं कर सकते सामने का राइट एम पी आई एम एल एट एवर सो इफ यू हैड टू कंसिडर ज्वाइनिंग पॉलिटिक्स वॉट वुड द रीजन बी फॉर यू वॉट इज द काइंड ऑफ चेंज यू थिंक यू कैन ब्रिंग अबाउट जस्ट यू कैन बी रॉन्ग इन माई इन माई केस फॉर श्योर आई वुड लुक एट लाइक रेंट लाइक वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट थिंग्स दैट प्लेग्स मी राइट नाउ इज हाउसिंग you know as a young guy and what not and housing societies can be pretty brutal when it comes to uh, single men and single women also like i heard like crazy stories of women looking for housing and what not and uh, how like i've had cases of friends fellow comedians and all who've been thrown out of their houses without any reason without any good reason and what not but without any notice so housing in general and and i go and like on shoots and all sometimes you just see the way people are living so housing is definitely one thing that especially housing in cities is one thing that i would definitely like to look into in terms of reform that would be a very good reason for me to go because i feel like you can enter politics for like one very specific reason and that I, that needs to be something that you passionately believe in like when i find a politician who passionately believes in something then i at least i feel empathetic towards them i i can humanize them okay what is your issue if it's just going to be some great thing that i'm going to change everything is going to be an era shifting thing and what not i i find it a bit fairy tale like but if you come and tell me ki okay we're going to look at the electricity situation we'll make sure that we don't have load shedding that makes sense to me when someone talks about like basic shit like you know the roti kapri ma- kapda makan thing that makes more sense to me because okay now you're talking about an issue that affects everyone on mass everyone has a problem with this but no one's looking for the solution Hmm. So, but in my case, definitely housing. Like that is something I'm going to look into. Aprajita, reaction? So, it's, I I think what you're saying it, it makes sense. Obviously, no, I'm not nobody to tell you that you know uh, this is not something that you should address first. But uh, I think this is the kind of problem that politicians are unable to solve. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because yes. they've got more. <laughs> because actually politicians have tried by the way i don't know if uh, you know government came up with a model tenancy act this mm. last year mm. or something right niti aayog ah. came up with it now mm. this problem starts from the fact that a housing and property rights and all of that is a state subject so first state of all central government cannot ah. do much ah. second mm. even if they come up with a model tenancy act the state has to kind of adopt it Unpopular. third ah. thing is that this is more to do with society and unless uh, society starts thinking differently uh, about single men single women about certain religions mm-hmm. about minorities mm-hmm. government i mean our constitution already says you can't discriminate on that basis but the mm-hmm. problem is enforcement right mm-hmm. and this is actually somewhere where probably you can do more as a comedian and somebody who works in entertainment industry 
in changing social norms then probably what government is able to achieve no it's abs- i think one of the biggest learnings in the last 10 uh, years is that the uh, i think the you know a lot of us who want to join politics we want to make a change right and that's uh, our idealistic self of course there are uh, some people who are there for the wrong reasons and mm. of course uh, that's a different matter altogether but i think to make change so many different actors in society have to come together and that has been the biggest learning and everybody feels equally helpless that hmm. is also the biggest learning okay so, watch I, it. so i so all yeah. the things i listed a politician can't do all the things <laughs> are to go. they can do one part of it you know like come okay, to the modern thing act and then okay, hope what? and pray and advocate with people that they will actually pay any heed to it Um, and also it will percolate down to the last <laughs> level to your society uncle who has yes. to finally take that decision <laughs> and to the police station and the beat officer that can actually come in and resolve any kind of conflict okay. i i i'll give you oh, one oh, example oh. of this noel uh, that what what aprajita okay. just said for example huh. so hmm. if if say for example the government passes this uh, you know model tenancy hmm. act and you are like hmm. this super popular comedian with like a giant following they would huh. come to you and they're like you huh. know we have passed this law now can you please make a few reels about this and talk about this so that we can get people on board you know like so that they actually know what this law is about and what what we are trying to do and please can you advocate for this so yeah but, but go on no have, you wanted to say have, something yeah so so basically the best a politician can do is whatever bolbachan they speak they write it down in a fancy legalese way and then just pray and hope that's like writing to santa dude <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, they can do they can do more things also but it takes so much time and you know another thing is that lifetime one you want lifetime is actually quite small period in like the world of policy and all of that also which is okay another learning I am, like ten years ago in the second okay. one law um, for example am, my, the funny thing is when i was in the first batch of lamb gst uh, i just started hmm. getting discussed i went hmm. to train the 10th batch of lamb and they were still working on gst yeah right? <laughs> so i was like wow like and this is an issue where both hmm. parties agreed both national ha. parties agreed that this needs to oh. be done so it was something ah. that was brought in by congress ultimately enacted by bjp and ah. yet it took us 10 years to get everybody on board on what it should look like and the bill passed ah. so yeah okay oh, yeah. i i think i think this makes sense so even what you said about adoption of policy also i remember on on ibm network one day i think vartala dina mehta had come who who works hmm. at the bsc and she was talking about how gst was given to the people and uh, they were given like government does all these demonstrations and what not to help people adapt to the new system or to the new this but no one participates like yeah. again like people don't participate people don't get the free training the system does not get tested and then day one of the launch the system fails and crashes because there just wasn't enough data to know what the loopholes were so when it came time for people to actually be political at that one point where they could support a new policy the new day डूड <laughs> ये तो हम जीएसटी की बात कर रहे हैं मेरे साथ एक रिसेंट इंसिडेंट हुआ राइट सो आई हैव बीन गोइंग थ्रू दिस मैसिव एग्जिस्टेंशियल क्राइसिस फॉर इयर्स नाउ अबाउट दिस वेरी सब्जेक्ट राइट व्हिच इज एक तो मैंने सात साल पार्लियामेंट में काम किया विद मल्टीपल एमपीज पार्टीज नेम इट आई हैव रिटन स्पीचेस आई हैव रिटन लॉज पार्लियामेंट में बहुत कुछ किया है ऑन द सरफेस राइट बट आई वाज थिंकिंग एक्चुअल में मैंने लाइक रियलिस्टिकली क्या किया है लाइक थिंक सो व्हेन आई थिंक ऑफ इट लाइक व्हाट चेंज कैन यू ब्रिंग एज अ पर्सन हु इज इन पॉलिटिक्स राइट सो माय लेवल माय थिंकिंग वुड बी दैट इट शुड एक्चुअली इंपैक्ट द पीपल और अ लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ पीपल एंड मेक देयर लाइव्स बेटर दैट इज व्हाट आई वुड कॉल इंपैक्ट राइट सो इट कैन बी लाइक अ रेंट टेनेंसी थिंग और इट कैन बी जस्ट द फिक्सिंग द रोड इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू वहां से जो भी पासर रहे जा रहे हैं उनसे लाइक यू हैव डन समथिंग राइट कुछ तो कुछ तो बेनिफिट आया है in these seven years the two things that i managed to play a role in are one is we built like around a 14 km road in our constituency mm. through the prime minister gramavas yojana uh, sorry mm. that that road scheme that was there mm. uh, prime minister mm. 
ग्रामीण सड़क योजना ग्रामीण सड़क योजना वन ऑफ माई एम पीज फाइल्ड अ प्राइवेट में बिल ऑन टर्निंग द बैम्बू फ्रॉम टर्निंग अ बैम्बू फ्रॉम अ ट्री टू अ ग्रास वॉट दैट मीन्स इज बिकॉज when you cut the bamboo it counted as deforestation so you needed to take a lot of permissions but bamboo is a fast growing grass so there were like entire industries that were dependent on getting that permission going through bureaucracy cutting it deforestation kar rahe to bahut industries ko problem ho raha tha so it was a one line change in a law in the forest act right that bomb bamboo you just had to change it from a tree to a grass right so we passed we we wrote this one line bill uh, and we put it in parliament as a private members bill kuch nahi hua uska 3 4 saal ke liye kuch nahi hua and next thing we know rajnath singh uh, basically introduces this bill for four years later when the mp is not even in parliament and he actually makes that change right and that kind of opens up like this giant industry of bamboo and like now it's like a billion dollar industry in the northeast right and i was like holy shit I I I actually played a role in that because I remember drafting that line, right? And it was the same line that this government used, and I was it blew my mind. But then I thought, seven years pe, itni magaj mari karke, these are the two things. But you know, uh, it's it's crazy, right? Uh, and and then the second thing, sorry, I wanted to bring up was RWAs. So now I'm in this place where neither am I in journalism. Neither am I in politics. I'm here hosting a podcast for basically an entertainment podcast company and having these conversations. So I was like, "Are you doing something? Are you doing something?" So I started going to RWA meetings. Oh wow! So, you must be like the youngest RWA member in the country or something. <laughs> One second. What is RWA? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah, it's it's basically uh, it's called uh, the Residents Welfare Association, right? Oh, housing society. Yes, yes. It, that is it. <laughs> where, is that where kind of yeah. the, the, if you had to like define it in one 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 sort of two lines, it's basically mm-hmm. neighborhood uncles who are hungry for power who basically come together and pretend mm-hmm. like they have power but they can do nothing. They just yeah. have to basically ask the councilor, is... ask the MLA, ask the yeah. officers, etc., to do things. Mm. Their mm. job is to basically look at the problems of what the residents' ka problem is, come mm. try to get a meeting together where nobody shows mm. up, and mm. then you basically draft this letter and then send it to the person responsible for solving it. Right? Mm. That is their job. Right? I was like, maybe dekhta ho kya ho raha hai? Kuch nahi hota. कुछ नहीं होता लाइक आई मीन हमारे यहाँ पे चोरिया पे चोरिया हो रही है आजू बाजू में नथिंग द फाइनली वॉट दे हैड टू डू वॉज इंक्रीज आर सब्सक्रिप्शन हायर अ प्राइवेट कंपनी टू हैव सिक्योरिटी क्लोज ऑल द गेट्स विदाउट रियली टेलिंग एनी बडी एंड दैट्स इट देन आर डब्ल्यू एस हाँ हो गया हमने ही कर दिया सब कुछ पॉलिटिक्स इज लोकल मैन Uh, but i have to take a quick break and after we come back i have many questions for uh, uh, aprajitha but mainly if someone wants to get into politics how can they do that because that is one big question which a lot of people have asked me a lot of people might have asked her and i think a lot of people must be thinking about so see you after this break hey everyone it's been another great week on the ivm podcast network On Cock and Bull, Saris is joined by Sri Ram and Vishal Raskina. They discuss the robbery at the Delhi capital scam, the Air India pilot who let a friend enter the cockpit, and many more stories. On the Wire Talk, Siddharth is in conversation with Anuradha Bhasin, executive editor of the Kashmir Times. They talk about her book, A Dismantled State, that carries stories from Kashmir after Article 370 was revoked. And on Anish Thing, Anish talks to Sandeep Gonzalez, co-founder of SS Homes, a luxury design label. They discuss why some suits are better than the others. And the do's and don'ts of suit maintenance. Once again, do not forget to visit our merch store on ivmpodcast.com. We've got some super cool stuff over there for you and your loved ones. Follow us on social media. We are at IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you like our shows, then do not forget to spread the word. You know, it really helps us a lot. And of course, don't forget to rate and review our shows on whatever platform you are listening to them. You can also find all our video shows on youtube.com/ivmpodcasts. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week. Cash free payments and HDFC mutual fund. 
Thank you so much for making this possible. Hello and welcome to Explain Like I'm 10 where we are asking an existential question how to enter politics. Uh we have before the break spoken about should you enter politics? and what is the change you can bring if you get into politics which is practically nothing as we have realized <laughs> and that way which which basically like aadha audience chala gaya hoga is point pe ki are ye kya nuance in it some nuance in it aisa nahi hai yes private sector mein log ppt banate hai yahan pe tum print out nikaloge bill ka that's all that's rahul gandhi try to bring sorry rajiv gandhi try to get the it revolution in india i mean because you wanted to get powerpoint in the in the parliament that's all there's nothing to it <laughs> listen noel there's a reason why the most popular podcast in india today is hosted by the prime minister called man ki baat okay where <laughs> basically it's it's i feel like it's his way to release frustration i, th- I think it's <laughs> i think it's bored so <laughs> well <While> listening <laughs> Uh, okay but uh, you know the the nuance as aprajita pointed out we need to bring that nuance back i agree uh, let's not get so cynical about politics because uh, mm-hmm. i don't want to i'm also a, an andar se mai bhi idealistic or optimistic aadmi obviously, uh, obviously yeah so that's uh, why you are having this podcast exactly <laughs> like to bring about change no it to bring about main change main canada ja raha hu by the way guys <laughs> <laughs> मतलब से निकल होके चले गए तो देर आर दीपल हु आर लेफ्ट हु आर स्टिल वेटिंग टू हियर हाउ टू एंटर पॉलिटिक्स सो अपराजिता when i ask you this question how do i enter politics what would you say okay first before i get into uh, how do i enter politics i do want to say that politics plays a very important role of agenda setting in society mm-hmm. right so while they can they sometimes obviously find it very very difficult to uh, you know implement everything that they pass but i think agenda setting leads to lot of factors working in one direction right for example okay. even with the modi government if they did the swachh bharat abhiyan now india mm-hmm. has been dirty since a long long time i mean mm-hmm. a filthy it was very filthy uh, all our cities and villages but what he did essentially is agenda setting or for example mm-hmm. if you look at aap in delhi they did this agenda setting that you know we have to improve schools obviously every government can give budgets behind it but they also then mobilize a lot of actors who can actually make that happen and while change is slow and frustrating it does happen otherwise we would not have progressed uh, mm-hmm. in the last whatever 75 years of our independence right so i think politics has a huge role to play uh, because it lets other actors do what they can do to achieve some kind of change right so they will mm-hmm. pull in entertainers they will pull in you know private sector to create jobs they will create those incentives for people to act in a some kind of manner which is good for society and therefore agenda setting i would say is the most important part that politicians play in any society so that so in a way in a way what you're saying is that uh, the swachh bharat example when when yeah. the prime minister comes on republic day and says ki oh humko bharat ko swachh karna hai it's like focus right yes, so essentially absolutely. a bunch of people who are also on their own working on this problem across yeah. the board are like oh the prime minister has signaled this so now we can all come together to sort of make this happen right absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. and um, and it's so important right like who decides what are we working towards is so important in any society um, so in that sense i think it has a very important role to play okay how do you enter it I think there are many many pathways. The easiest one, unfortunately, in India, is still if you are born or married into a political family. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes, uh, right. So if you are not born into a political family and you really want to get into politics, one of the easiest ways might be to get married into a political family and then be nice to your in-laws and make sure that you are the 
नेक्स्ट यू नो उत्तर अधिकारी ऑफ दैट पॉलिटिकल वट एवर सी is there a shadi.com <laughs> with politicians <laughs> on there is a shop in that show no contact him auntie <laughs> unfortunately that is still very much true in india and actually it's not an indian phenomenon to be honest mm-hmm. like even if you look at us even if you look at uk everywhere uh, you know it's much easier to be able to access that ecosystem because it mm-hmm. tends to be complex and opaque and therefore you know if you know and it's across professions right we have nepo babies everywhere in law mm. in legal profession in um, uh, bollywood in bollywood i am actually very excited to see if there will be nepo babies in public policy also in the next generation because we are like the first generation <laughs> uh, yeah that's super exciting <laughs> we see policies for policy makers then <laughs> yeah, yeah you see that so that happens uh, right so that's one second thing is if you're a woman right mm. then obviously uh, you can actually well uh, you have a more chance of getting a ticket because there are reservations for women at the local mm. level of governance so in the panchayat mm. elections in the uh, uh, councillor elections mm. you mm. do have that advantage i don't want to call it mm. advantage because reservations are i mean i do believe are done to kind of yeah. a group mm. that is mm. uh marginalized represented mm. uh mm. but you know that has led to some opportunities for women uh, definitely mm. um, uh, you know in panchayat elections for example initially all the women who were getting tickets were also wives of you know elected sarpanches mm-hmm. but that yeah. has begun to change there are mul- many uh, because they've been around since 1990s now there are many studies that have actually documented that you know more women are also getting into uh, local elections uh, even in municipal corporations i know hmm. of women personally who actually did not come from political backgrounds but because hmm. uh, there are certain seats where only women can can contest parties hmm. and parties did not have enough women in their cadre so they actually looked a little bit outside and they gave hmm. uh tickets to women who were well educated especially in the urban cities mm. um and you know i met somebody from tamil nadu recently uh you know mm. from one of the dravidian parties i don't want to say which one they mm. said we are desperately looking for educated women who want to get into politics because we mm. don't have enough women to fill those seats so mm. there are some opportunities that have opened up like he said if you were tamilian and if you came to us we would give you a ticket i was like shit so that was the topic then you know uh, I, here i would like to interrupt if there is any uh, woman who is a tamilian listening to this podcast please please consider yes. this yes, yes. job they opening like, yeah because they were like in our party education is valued so much and if you are coming from like a related field we would seriously consider you so that is something which i think is something to be considered a uh, president you're... sorry uh, just interrupting yeah. just one second to ask an additional question here um like 10 years we've been working in this and watching this space have you seen this change though like for example as you said earlier jo uh, jisko ticket nahi de sakte uske wife ko ticket de diya but now are you realistically seeing this change across the board where political parties are actually looking for educated people to give tickets to and like yeah. let's not say educated but just people who are uh, a passionate do not come from a political background but also are uh, are seen like seem like change makers yes i think at the local level i have interacted personally with quite hmm. a few women specifically who came hmm. through that route i don't know about hmm. men as much and that hmm. i think happened because of this reservation piece right yeah. for example and every city has a municipal corporation right like for example in gurgaon now mm. gurgaon mm. if you go and see it's a small municipal body but a, uh, like you know it's a rich city mm. there's a lot mm. of people who live there it's important to india's mm. economy i would say so mm. i have met for example women who were just doing corporate jobs and then you know they kind of but obviously it's not like somebody is going to approach you you still yeah. have to approach the political party you still have to be involved in your local rwa so i would say meghnat you've taken your first step uh, in that sense <laughs> you have yeah. to be involved with your local community right you mm. have to kind of showcase 
and to be honest it helps to have money hmm. right money okay. to be able to fight your own elections uh, and hmm. that brings me to your to my second point if you're yes, born second. in a very rich family or if you become um, uh, if you're a startup founder you have a great exit you have like a billion dollars yes there are good chances that you will you can use that to find a party which will value that kind of money usually not national parties uh, i mm. mean they also value money but you need a lot of money to be valued yeah. by them but yeah. for example regional parties i do know of certain politicians who kind of you know their main thing was that i'm bringing you funding so hey can i get a ticket in return mm. that yeah. is another legit way uh, and i do think that in the future we can probably i do feel i i don't know like all these startup new money that is being generated right now i do feel that in the few in maybe next two decades or something we might see some of these people get into politics as well um, mm. and we've seen that earlier also right like for example nandan nilakani fought in election mm. i don't want to say that he only is important because he has money he has done a lot for the country as well well some people mm. feel excited about it some people don't but essentially mm. he was a business leader and you know he did fight in lok sabha election right unfortunately mm. or fortunately in india that is no guarantee of electoral success i am just talking yeah. about how you can get a ticket right yeah. whether you win or lose depends on so many different factors like caste whether people mm. see that you know you actually can deliver anything from them which party do you associate with or if uh, you are the right kind of christian or not uh, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah you have to be the right kind of hindu or muslim or christian so there are so many things involved in that but at least you can get a ticket using that as something I I wanted to again interrupt you yeah. here yeah. because uh, this point that you raised is also important because uh, when you do get a ticket right uh, what what Noel also pointed out that you will have to create an image which essentially uh, appeals to the voters after that right which means that if you go into the election saying ki mujhe ye rent ka jo mamla hai wo sort karna hai nobody will vote for you probably like only the people who are having that problem will vote for you and which is a very little amount of people because way more people are having problems for water um, khana uh, a bunch of basic things right uh, so what what then noel would have to do is that's just one of the things that i will solve for you but other than that i will have to also appeal to like let's say um, a religious body who wants to build a church uh, you will have to appeal to let's say a, a scst community which which is like we are under represented we don't have a leader will you stand for us then you would have to also reach out to like even uh, contractors who are like are ye contraction mein bahut corruption hota hai ye pehle wala jo leader tha bahut khata tha will you eat less i mean like not not like <laughs> come le lo but le lo will you stand for us and get you us need to disrupt the contractor market <laughs> exactly <laughs> then then you will have to reach out to shopkeepers right who are like are hamare market area mein wo entry road kharab ho gaya hai wahan se customer nahi aata hai ya fir koi aata nahi hai whatever whatever will you help us do that? so what you have to then do as the person who got a ticket in whatever ways that aprajita just described is actually try to map your constituency and see कि अच्छा ये लोगों को अपील करने के लिए मुझे क्या बोलना पड़ेगा ये लोगों को अपील करने के लिए मुझे क्या बोलना पड़ेगा एंड ऑल्सो मस्ट पॉइंट आउट यू डोंट नीड टू हैव अ प्लान येट मतलब व्हेन यू गो इन यू जस्ट नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई एंड टॉक अबाउट इट राइट इफ यू डू गेट इलेक्टेड देन यू आर लाइक अच्छा अब तो शॉर्ट करना है अब क्या कर सकते हैं फिर देखेंगे But yeah, go on up, Rajita. After this. But I think, but I think, uh, Meghna, I do want to put a rider to it. The good thing is, you only have to appeal to thirty percent of your constituency, right? Also, yes. Yes. So oh. basically, what you need to know is that if there are hundred people in your constituency, you need to be sure that thirty to thirty-five or thirty to forty, if you're brilliant, people will actually vote for you, because that's what you need to actually win an election in India, like the vote share yeah. in terms of that. Mm. So. a lot of politicians or a lot of political parties actually slice and dice their constituency to see that for example in my constituency if out of 100 people 10 are traders 7 belong to a certain religious group 10 belong to a certain caste and 15 belong to some special interest group that makes it 35 to 40 then i'm through 
i probably mm. don't even care about the rest and that's the <laughs> actually truth of how elections mm. are usually fought and mm. political parties have now consultants and data scientists mm. to do this for them and they do booth level mapping and stuff like that mm. to map as well so uh, okay let me talk about the third route which mm. i have seen actually which i think is interesting but you have to study a lot for it mm. upsc i think it's less discussed way mm. of getting into politics but i do mm. think it's a legitimate way to get into politics at least at this point and i'm sure uh, megnath you've met enough you know mps who were ex bureaucrats yeah usually they tended to be in rajya sabha i still think that they are in rajya sabha but many of them have also switched over to lok sabha then mm. after mm. getting elected to rajya sabha and i think what upsc in india does it's supposed to be civil service but essentially you become like the local you know raja especially if you're an mm. ias officer or an ips officer in our country uh, you know you are the highest ranking government official in a district a district is mm. a large like a huge number of people live in a district depending upon where you are in the country and there are about 600 last count is more than 600 districts right mm. Mm. and uh, we have about 545 lok sabha constituencies so kind of similar number of population in each district if you actually as a young upsc aspirant already or somebody who's gotten into the services already have an mm. eye to this at the end of your career you can actually work towards that right mm. and i actually see a lot of mid career uh, officers now building their public profile as well which is newer mm. which is a new trend you know earlier mm. actually civil servants just wanted to hide behind the background not be seen too much but obviously you know um, uh, social media has kind of enabled that direct contact mm. as well a lot more and i do see that some civil servants kind of build up their profile in a way that you know they are also popular but more than that they have gained subject matter expertise and mm. you know when a party comes into power they need all kind of people it's not just enough to have people who are popular among their constituents they also need to run a government for example the modi government right now he needs somebody to be an external affairs minister you know and somebody everybody who is elected in lok sabha may not be suited to do that hmm. so they will then need to a bureaucrat to actually fill that position similarly mr ashwini vaishnav who heads the rail uh, ministry right now and also ministry of electronics and it is an ex bureaucrat um you know so and this has been a recurring theme even when congress was in power they had many people who were ex ias officers so that's another way to get into politics mm. okay. fourth way i think which is also an interesting way again uh i think it was more of uh, and this is i would say the rajya sabha route that i'm coming to now right. sorry uh, wait sense. wait before you get there i just right. wanted to point out about the bureaucrats here um so the bureaucrats uh, of course they're subject matter experts there but also think about it this way right you know like the politician is the one who is ordering things for the bureaucrat to do right and yes. the bureaucrat is implementing it in the district right so a bureaucrat is actually in a great position to be the face of that program so when he is actually doing things for people it's not the politician technically doing it it's the bureaucrat so then he can actually publicly go out and say that listen ha matlab mantri ji ne to bola tha what maine kiya so in a way he also becomes a vote getter right he or she becomes a vote getter so if this person this bureaucrat becomes very popular in a particular district right the party will also be more interested in giving them tickets so in a way it becomes an incentive for a bureaucrat to also work more in that district and stick to that district so that they can actually increase the influence for their political debut at some point yeah just wanted to say also noel sorry bahut sara information overload hoga please feel free to interrupt us any time okay yeah Okay. Uh, I had one question, especially when you were saying that so many newer people are coming into politics. What tends to be the motivation for them to enter? Like, I like this is from my experience of seeing uh, a lot of like shows from the US and whatnot, where you'll see kids saying, "I want to be president," or kids saying, "I want to be, I want to be in government," and whatnot. That does not seem to be the trend, at least in the school or in the college. That I, no one ever had like. 
uh, at, at least in Bombay, I mean, I'm sitting in front of two people who had some aspiration. But as a kid, there was never a political aspiration kind of thing uh, that we had. So is that trend changing? Are younger people openly saying that, you know, uh, saying that I want to have a future as a prime minister or I want to have a future as someone who is a member of parliament? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, Noel, by the way, this is a typical... If you ask people in Delhi, half the class will say they want to be prime minister. I think this is also Ajay, a okay. Bombay thing. It's you a know, geography thing. They want to okay. make money or they want to go to Bollywood. They don't hmm. want to mess with politics unless there's a need to. And we see that in our work in Bilac. Hmm. We work with young people across the country. And every city has a very different orientation. For example, in Bangalore, every kid wants to be a startup founder. It's, it's crazy. You know, oh, that's the... Okay all the urban elite is just thinking in that manner and delhi if you are like i was born in delhi like government and politics is a part of our you know like dna okay. you can't yeah. take hmm. that away so i think it has got something to do with that hmm. um i think though uh, because you know every next generation has information more access to information I do feel that younger people on a generic level these days are more inclined towards, I wouldn't say politics, but they see mm. themselves as active members of society. And I think that okay. is even more important than people wanting to get into politics. Mm. Because okay. politics ah. responds to incentives uh, from ah. voters, right? Okay. And younger people, I think because, you know, there is... I would say there are both kind of incentives at play. One is that, you know, you want to sound cool. So you want to get involved in like, you know, saving the earth or, you mm. know, uh, you want to kind of talk about sustainability or more important things. It helps you get into better colleges, especially if you're not, you know, planning to be in India, you want to go to any universities abroad, you want to build a profile like that. But I genuinely think the kind of information that every new generation has it also mm. really opens up their eyes to what is possible and mm. to the fact that, you know, everything that is happening in the world, you don't take it for granted. You see the pros and cons of everything. You know that there are two sides of the debate to everything. All mm. my uh, high school students are already on LinkedIn. I don't know why. And their profiles are... What? Yeah. They... Why <laughs> Like this high school kid told me, like I wasn't very active on LinkedIn, you know, till about a year or year ago or whatever. Duh. <laughs> you know, I sent you a request. You have not accepted it. Are you not active on LinkedIn? You know, I'm so, not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You don't need to be, Megna. You're too famous. But, um, he's, but he's, a, he's a kid. He does not know Sapkuj WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, but you know, like I, I do feel that kids have an orientation because of the information that's available to them. And um, I also would say that, you know, there are like people like, I want to give some credit to Meghnath also here and you know just this whole ecosystem that got built in the last 10 years there are just so many more opportunities for example you know uh, Meghnath had this series on constitution uh, which was so popular on YouTube among teenagers actually that it wasn't yeah. that yeah. the audience for it yeah. which okay. you did not foresee right when you were building that. I did it honestly yeah. so like uh, so noel so like this series that we did which was constitution mm -hmm. maine wo youtube mera dimag mein ghus gaya tha ki are maine content creator banega youtube pe and mera audience obviously was the usual hamara like 18 to 35 mm -hmm. ke beech mein hamara jo audience hai usko target karna hai oh. and mm -hmm. i was like are bahut funny banayenge you know we'll have like a bunch of jokes we'll make it very relatable and mm -hmm. i'm talking about democracy right you know like how it mm -hmm. works how, constitution mm -hmm. etc Hmm. We went in with that, right? Uh, and nobody came. Like in the first hmm. few uh, ECs, like episodes and one hmm. season that we released. But something magical happened, which Aprajita is pointing out. Bacche boss, like matlab, 10 saal se leke, 15 saal ke beech ke bacche basically started coming to me and saying, Are bhaiya, aap to bade achche civics teacher ho. Right? Uh, and, <laughs> and the weird thing is, so for ep two episodes, three episodes, we were being very vulgar also. Like because we were huh. targeting that audience, right? But huh. uh, we actually got feedback from parents who were showing it to huh. the kids. Ki, huh. boss, you know, like we are showing it to our kids. Please clean up your act. Please, you know, <laughs> audience, what is. 
and then after हाँ. that we entirely like revamped the series and we हाँ. made it like kid friendly but also हुँ. very basic very stupid uncle jokes we put in like we didn't have हाँ. any like um you know like edgy stuff in there but like as a, we put in like a bunch of dad jokes basically which the kids <laughs> loved right Haan. and and you know, i've like, only seen their dad do comedy <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. and uh, <laughs> but but yeah uh, that's what that's what aprajita was saying i think you know it it's also like a learning for me as well that um the people who i thought would be interested in something like the constitution policy etc weren't mm-hmm. but the mm. people who i did not think would even understand it where so i think mm. that is her experience on the ground also i'm guessing yeah mm. go on yes. prajita absolutely so i think uh, that is really interesting that you know information has led to more interest uh, mm. so yeah i do think that you know more people probably think of it as a career option or they want to get engaged okay. in some at some point mm. the idea is how do we make sure that they don't lose that idealism along the way mm. and yeah. you know they are not like me and megna sitting at <laughs> early 30s mm. and discussing how <laughs> we wanted to get into politics but yet <laughs> we are still uh, thinking about it <laughs> yeah so uh, what is like a realistic career plan for a politician like if say someone is from the age group that megna just mentioned What's like a plan? Like everyone knows that engineering करने का तो भाई IIT जाओ prep करो आठ भी चौथी से चालू करो start learning science, physics, mathematics and what not. Like what is the what is the proper realistic hmm. career plan for a politician? So to say. If I may, if I may take that up, Rajita, uh, quickly. Yes. But uh, so I am still in that state, right? Where I am like, मुझे I do want to. maybe attempt fighting an election at one point right but as aprajita mm-hmm. said there are like these multiple options which none of them are open to me right now i mean like i i, I don't have money i haven't been fo- born in a political family i can't do like ias or whatever right now um the other thing which he was saying which is rajya sabha um so the rajya sabha point being that you become itna popular and itna subject expert matter subject matter expert that some government mm-hmm. feels the need to have you and give you a ticket and you enter rajya sabha right uh, that that option is still open for me and i, I think, think aprajita is right well. option yeah that's option yeah. that option is open for you exactly so that yeah. that is one option that is open for me but i think there is other ways to do this also and i've been thinking about this right realistically if i have to today decide uh, i want to get into politics what do i do next uh my thing is uh, a i feel like all politicians have to be generalist um so mm-hmm. you just get a lot of understanding and knowledge about how different levers of power work so essentially working close to government somewhere right ki are ye bureaucrat kaam kaise karta hai ab ye bureaucrat ko chahiye kya right so that i can basically tally up to them uh ye politician ko chahiye kya so that i can tally up to them oh ye chief minister ko kya chahiye uh ye jo jo actors hai which actually decide ki ticket kisko milega those i need to figure out ki wo unko chahiye kya so that is one right again the way to do this is to basically start working in parties or you know start start doing internships with ministries or even work in mp offices most mp offices just let you into their door and like ha chalo kab kaam karo paisa nahi milega but kaam karo um they need people okay so that is one way the other thing i'm also thinking of uh, which which i think is worth also thinking about is um uh, popularity yeah i mean like that's the obvious I, way of getting into politics yeah. yeah exactly i mean like you have to be known to like maybe a community that only you can reach out to and listens to you so mm-hmm. right now i would say i don't have that big of a community or following but i do have some following right yeah. so mera kuch to value ban raha hai yahan pe right but impo- more importantly by doing this what i'm also signaling to people who will give uh, party tickets is that i am capable of actually gathering a following right, right. so when a party is coming to uh, decide whether to give tickets or not they have like xyz candidate mm-hmm. now x and y don't really have not put in effort into gathering this community or whatever but why uh, if z has actually created a community jo bhi hai twitter following ho ya fir you know youtube following ho ya jo bhi hai it shows capability ki z is capable of actually getting us votes 
uh if if we put him on a f- on the field and we are able to like deploy him and train him in the right way uh he might be someone who might surprise us right so that is another thing that i am thinking about third thing which weirdly enough i think aprajita should also speak about is luck yes. <laughs> the biggest factor of politics and being elected is being in the right place at the right time, the right time. yes and this is this is you cannot prepare yourself for that but you also have to be aware that you should identify when the time has come so like you you have to basically keep waiting and then there will be moments in your life where you're like this is it this is when i get in this is it and you get like literally hours of notice ki acha i have to make this decision now whether i start working in this direction or that direction and then you basically go into that direction which you think makes sense right that happened with narendra modi that happened with every politician that i have worked with ever yeah all the stories that they have told me is like are ha ek din na pata hai kya hua mere sath and then like they got the ticket so it's it's basically mm-hmm. like these um, multiple factors that moments. you're yeah. trying to arrange so mm-hmm. that luck favors you sort of you mm-hmm. know like is yeah. it yeah Yeah. Can I can I just say one thing that I have really thought about and learned because there yeah. have been a few times when I have been like okay let me now start working towards politics. I think one of the things that you if you don't come from a political family or if you don't come from a business family you come from like a normal middle class you know urban I'm talking about urban right now because I'm also not that familiar with what happens in the rural but my sense is it may be the similar one thing that you need to get into politics is complete control over your time which unfortunately yes. many middle class people don't have mm. and you know somebody really famous i don't want to take their name but like a public figure when i was in oxford he came to give a lecture from india mm. and mm. i told him at that time i was still like 22 or 23 and you know i told him that i want to get into politics first of all he asked me what's your name so i said aprajita bharti now my parents were also i guess idealistic so they didn't want caste to be easily identifiable from my name so they made it aprajita bharti which now means invincible indian woman so he said which caste are you now i you know unfortunately born in delhi completely blind to caste fault lines in our society went to a private school even in college some of us blind to it because i went to a more professional college I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Actually, he said, if you don't know, then you are probably not from the lower castes, right? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you would have known. Uh, and anyway, he told me you don't even, I mean, very mm-hmm. politically incorrect. That I can mm-hmm. tell that you are not by looking at you. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. Mm-hmm. It was very shocking to me. He said, then what do your parents do? I said, they work in the government. He said, but that basically means that you also have to earn your living. I mm-hmm. said, yes. He said, "Okay, that means you're not even rich." I said, "You're right. I'm not rich." <laughs> <laughs> He said, so "Neither do you belong to a lower caste. Nor are you rich. Like, nor are you like so privileged. Nor are you so underprivileged." So who is that talking to me? You're born in Delhi, you know. So how will you get into politics? Only Rajesh was blue works for you. He told me at that time at twenty. He had this like weird. you know kind of uh, <laughs> algorithm in his mind that you know he just you know put it in place uh, and you know ye nahi hone wala right abhi at least for the next 10 15 years don't even think about it he told me in so many words and at that time i got super offended you know it was like mm-hmm. the- Nearer to me, first of all, that how less do I know about my country, mm-hmm. and how less mm-hmm. do I understand my own privilege or lack of it here, mm-hmm. right? And second, uh, what I learned is that I was like, you know, you don't want to listen to this when you're twenty-two or twenty-three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That you can't do this. You know, why are you even thinking about it right now? You believe that you can do whatever you want, mm-hmm. but actually, in the last ten years. the only thing that i've thought about is wow this guy told me in 5 minutes what i've learned in the next 10 years from experience yeah right? <laughs> basically i am kind of coming to the same conclusion that what you really need also is and it's linked to your privilege right whether mm. you have <coughs> or sometimes actually lack of it 
that mm. you have nothing to lose and therefore you have all the time to for example give to party activities you are unionizing mm. people you know you are working mm. with people in grassroots there is nothing calling you to kind of give your time to that you need to be fakir aadmi basically exactly fakir aadmi yes fakir aadmi do really when in politics it's true. yeah you know you have nothing to lose you give everything to a movement you feel like you're a part of something bigger it gives mm-hmm. you purpose and they sustain you but you don't mm-hmm. live in luxury and you don't even have the aspiration because you haven't seen that mm-hmm. the or you are so well taken care of your family is able to take care of and that is why actually a lot of even women are getting into counselor uh, kind of positions because they are housewives you know mm-hmm. there is a i actually know of people personally who are like in their early 50s who have now are now doing politics their children are already settled okay. their family is well taken care of they have big businesses whatever they mm. need not be involved in those businesses so they mm. can choose to now fight elections and give enough time to the party to actually do whatever needs to be done right i i, I must add one more thing aprajita here and i yes. think shubhankar who is our audio engineer actually asked this very interesting question right he asked ki is v for vendetta a realistic situation but i'm going to interpret that a little bit um i think uh, one more thing that you have to also think of is are you a rebel uh, because i think arvind kejriwal is one big example of this right which is essentially i as officer did all the things etc resigned kiya but then he the dedicated life, himself yeah. right yeah. he dedicated himself to life. activism and whatever but he found the moment where he became the biggest rebel against the powers that be right mm-hmm. so if you are able to stand out as this be for vendetta sort of situation where you are able to stand out as a sort of a protester right mm-hmm. who is fighting the power for the people i feel like that is also like an important factor like that that is the projection you also have to do because it's very easy for you to sort of suck up to power and get in and basically arrange everything in a way that you get the ticket mm-hmm. and then you finally get to a place where you're fighting an election it's way harder to challenge that power and become a power by yourself where you are taking that decision where it's like mujhe kyu ticket dega koi main ticket dunga logo ko right you know like i want to be that person who is forming a party i want to be an independent candidate which is a very important sort of mindset that you require right way difficult we way, way more difficult it but it requires a lot of courage and absolutely i mean risk everything right that yeah. is something that very few people possess and therefore you have very few examples actually who have taken that route hmm. also and uh, noel if you have any other questions please before i come uh, continue and conclude i just thinking about like uh, a lot of people i see are on flexies like how far is <laughs> it's a dumb question how oh, much does flexi politics matter <laughs> because i see like there's like 10 15 people on like flexi saying dada tum sa ashirwad then what not all that's happening <laughs> so the how flexes. to to what extent yeah yeah okay yeah the yeah. flexi yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So, so like how how to what extent does that but is that a legit route <laughs> to becoming a politician <laughs> I think everything is legit that gets you closer to power, and basically <laughs> there's a lot of sycophancy in every mm. party, right? So you have to mm. suck up to the top person in every party, and you do it through flexies or whatever. I also mm. want to sorry, we are leaving out one very obvious route to politics and a successful one, which is student politics, right? So student yes. politics is something that is a way to get involved in politics really young when you are in your mm. undergrad basically in india that's how it translates to and then mm. if you become popular in the party if you are for example in delhi university especially mm. you know if you are mm. a part of the nsui or uh, mm. sorry, abbp abbp so, yeah and then you know even communist party has its own uh, wing and mm. uh, other parties also have isa i believe right isa yes. i think and so mm-hmm. then that actually and you become like a student political leader then you start early essentially oh. and then if mm. you continue to capitalize on it uh, mm. you know you can become a spokesperson uh, you know mm. early on in your life and then um, hopefully kind of work sure. towards getting more see uh, party tickets 
However, having said that, even in student politics in India, there is a lot of this family kind of you know mm-hmm. stuff happening. Okay. So you have to fight really hard. And mm-hmm. second, even then, it comes at a cost of you know. For example, if you come from a family which again puts a lot of pressure on you to perform academically, you will not mm-hmm. be able to devote that kind of time to student mm-hmm. politics. Mm-hmm. So again, mm-hmm. that trade-off is every is there in your life all the time. And a lot of hmm. people actually who want to get into politics are not able to get into politics because they are not able to do that trade off any time in their life. Yeah, and that and is also, actually what keeps away people from politics. Yeah, I I wanted to also like uh, answer like uh, Noel's question. So, flexi wala jo question hai na. So, like the thing is, you know, Noel, think about it. If you tomorrow decide that you want to be one of those people who is like. You pakdo a local leader, unka birthday hold lo, and he was like, "Arey dada, tum sa ashirwad, happy birthday," mm-hmm. and you put a uh-huh. put a flexi there, right? Mm-hmm. And you put it in a way that it is on the route of that leader and where they pass. So if you see, okay. and this is a very interesting example, I'll give you, right? So uh, I was traveling with my MP uh, on in his constituency, right? There's one particular road which he used to take from Bhubaneswar to Dhankanal, right? Which is like his constituency. And there's this particular road which which his party workers knew he would take to come in and out of his constituency. So that road will be full of flexes with his face on it. And the chief minister and are uh, congratulations on this and that and whatever. Uh, his his son got like a mundan dan and uspe bhi congratulations ke flexi lag gaye the. He he said this that you know the interesting thing is that they have put in work into this, like they know my movement, they know they mm. have noticed that this is what I will see, this is the face mm. I will remember. So they put their faces there because the leader will keep looking at them, wishing them whenever they pass from that way. So which means that when they actually come in the front, there is like uh, this monkey brain in there, value. which is that, uh. "Arey, I know you." I know you from huh. somewhere, right? Thank you for your wishes. <laughs> yeah. So in huh. a way, in a weird way, right? Like these hundred party workers who are actually coming to, uh, like coming to the leader. Out of that, you stand out by default, right? Okay. Which is because That's your face just becomes familiar for that person, right? Hmm. So then, if you are the leader who is taking these decisions of giving party tickets or even increasing your influence in the party in whatever way you want, you have already hmm. achieved step one. by being mm. noticed right being noticed is the most hard thing you want you want to achieve in politics which is Achha. there are a thousand people under the leader who want their attention if you are that Achha. one person who even is able to have like a 5 minute conversation with them in one constituency and people Achha. around you look at you doing that mm. khatam you are like oh is that perception for, thing it's Achha. a perception thing right it's all a perception mm. game So I mean, if you want to faster. go down that ro- route, uh, Noel, please, uh, you know, like whatever special kind of question, yeah, yeah, yeah. like flexi <laughs> laga diya. Start putting flexi. Jesus yeah, Christ yeah. blesses us all. Free <laughs> holy water distribution. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. One... Uh, go on. Uh, last question. Just time for one question. Yeah, yeah. So I had one question. Keep uh, now again. Like I've seen a lot of US shows, which. Uh, are based on the political working of us like west wing is an example again it idealizes the working of the white house but there is west wing there is veep there is uh, uh, again like it's a bit uh, muddled but tumhara house of cards and what not which talk about politics which talk about how politics works in india we don't have those shows in india it's still again people versus politician and what not but if there were a show what are what are the workings of politics and political offices that should be shown that are never shown on media like what I'll should you, and what could be like the screenplay first of all i'll i'll tell you a secret i'll tell uh-huh. you a secret i have already written one uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but funny thing production house bought the show but then uh-huh. nobody else wanted to fund it basically no uh-huh. otp ott platform is taking it nobody mm-hmm. wants to touch it nobody mm-hmm. wants to do this content right Then now we can't we like shoot it among ourselves get all the x slams basically we do course. the acting i i direct i have done so much theater actually aprajita <laughs> that's not a bad idea let's start idea. a fundraiser let's yes. start a fundraiser home production 
क्या कर बट डोल टू आंसर योर क्वेश्चन गोन सॉरी अप्रजिता वी कैन डू इट एट आर ऑफिस you know <laughs> and basically we just need like a good cinematographer and we can yeah. release it on uh, youtube let's do this yeah, so yeah. <laughs> chalo <laughs> yeah noel if you want to help us do this please <laughs> 100% <laughs> no so the one satirical is... comedy after nayak is required <laughs> yes so in the in the show that we were writing uh, again i can't reveal who we were writing it for what we were doing mm-hmm. whatever it was but the basic idea that we were working with there is that we want to show uh, the inner workings of politics so we were not focusing mm-hmm. on the leaders in the front us pe to hazar tum bana loge but what do the party workers do what do the bureaucrats do what do the fixers do in the background right ah. like For example, the flexi thing that I just told you, that was one of our scenes where one of oh, this okay. one one guy starts off in one small constituency and he comes up with this idea that I have made a flexi so that I will reach up to the top. And then he okay. basically step by step starts getting attention of the leader until the point where he gets a ticket. Then he has to start figuring out that oh, boss, now the ticket is gone. Now I have to figure out that constituency where I can appeal to who I can appeal to. right huh. and okay. this is a upper caste person who is trying to get into politics which is like the worst thing you can be right now uh, in huh. in a small rural constituency right so then huh. he has to figure out ways in which to do that so i mean the show was not really about like what the congress has done or what the bjp mm. has done or what. it was a very real sort of alternate universe that we were forming where huh. it was about all these political actors and how they were desperately trying to get to the top where they actually have power to make a change but in mm. that journey their power to this whole change thing just goes away out of the window uh, where they are like oh ab to bas power chahiye because they also realize ki change kya hi karna hai <laughs> so like uh, the thing we started yeah. with in the beginning but yeah uh, aprajita do you agree with this plot <laughs> I think this plot is great. It's too close to reality, uh, but but yeah, I think it makes sense. Yeah, I'm all and aha, so chalo fundraiser karte uh, guys. If you want to see a show like this happen with Noel as a writer, maybe and the person who writes, uh, like who makes the flexies, I guess or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so like, uh, please leave a comment below. Uh, okay, closing thoughts, guys. Uh, I just have to say, don't be cynical. Uh, hey, there are ways. Figure out ways to get into politics. Aprajita, I think uh, you know it's important for people to want to get into politics. And as yeah. I already said, that politics does a very important job of having a vision of what our society should be like. And the more number of alternate visions we have, it's good for the country. So it's mm. good that you know more people want to get into politics. It is not easy. It comes at a huge personal cost. i think uh, uh, megna you have worked with so many politicians i have worked with so many politicians all of them go through i mean if there is one single biggest mental health crisis in our country is the mental health of our elected representatives elected actually. representatives yeah it is yeah. the most insecure job in the world you know you have to go back to the ballot again and again every 5 years if your government stays mm. even if you get elected mm. but even to get to the point that you get elected there are so many hoops to cross there is so mm. much inner party politics which is much mm. more brutal than what we actually see in terms of cross party politics so mm. therefore you also have to work out yourself and you know become mm. capable of dealing with all that uh, mm. so i think it's good to go in with your eyes open uh, and also having a good understanding of how people view you uh, mm. not just what we think about ourselves and then having mm. courage to you know just follow mm. in whatever we need to think and then mm-hmm. as megna said luck has a huge role to play but then mm-hmm. well we'll never know unless we try to mm-hmm. get into politics get into it and yeah. one more uh, sorry the luck thing uh, i have one very smart person who uh, i have spoke to again very popular person i won't name the person a uh, big leader i was just like having an interaction with them fortunately and uh, they were like um you know one thing that people really think of politics is that everybody is aggressive you yes. know like everybody who is there is an extrovert and you know like it's like oh public speaking aata hai uh, they are okay with like taking a lot of shit they are uh, doing a lot of these things right 
one big thing that need you need to understand is patience you know like there is a right place there is a right time but you have to wait you have to stay dormant for yes. years before your time comes and you have to take it right you have to let that keeda be in your, be in your head that one day i will me apna time aayega but yeah. you also have to be patient enough to be dormant all that time and not make any moves that will upset people or like ruin that chance whenever it comes uh that i think is is also like something i wanted to add uh, guys we are above time uh we have to i i mean this can go endlessly um aprajita i know there is a lot to talk about this subject more i will get you back again okay i know okay. there is like i wanted to do an episode with you about public policy also which we will do eventually uh so um noel uh thank you so much will you get into politics maybe at a very local level <laughs> at a very local level that okay. i would say is a success yes. <laughs> i would count that <laughs> well done aprajita thank you so much once, yep. we, once i invent my own christianity then i will <laughs> first step one day oh my god we just leave no uh, your voice is too low politics. so you are on the right track we didn't yes. cover that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um okay uh, thank you guys i have to end this here uh, guys if you are watching this on our youtube stream please like this please share this episode with a lot of people i humbly request you because i know a lot of you might want to get into politics or are thinking about how we can do this and might have all the wrong ideas about it hopefully today we gave you some right ideas and some positive ways in which you can actually get into it um share it with people who also want to get into it but never told you about it but you always knew that they want to so do that as well uh, Sorry, please can do can i say just yeah. one last thing if you are sure. a woman who is listening to this show please 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 specifically consider getting into politics because we do need more women representation and especially at the local level there is you know now some space i think not many women are exploring it so please do yeah. that yeah and aprajita if you ever get into politics please consider me as your campaign of manager of yes we have to make and... that super hit show that is our path to politics yes <laughs> and return favor if i get into politics before you please become my campaign manager <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay. Um, okay thank you so much guys thank you for watching i will see oh. you next week bye bye bye, bye. take care